All right, folks, here we have our beautiful little Indy R5K uh, pizza box, and I took the old SCSI hard drive out of it because it was a whopping 4 gig, and I decided I simply had too much software to load on it to survive on 4 gig. I loaded a brand new 15,000 RPM 73 gig drive inside the machine. Um, that being said, I now have an operating system, uh, that, or now I have a machine with no operating system. Uh, so if you've bought an Indy, uh, or any any Silicon Graphics machine at a garage sale, or I'm uh, probably not going to find them at a garage sale. Um, this one actually came from a, a place that produced aeronautics hardware, um, uh, so military defense type stuff. But um, anyhow, if you get your hands on one, and you're probably going to get it with no hard drive, you're going to go in the same scenario. And I tell you what, the first time I did this, it was a pain. Um, so the first thing you'll need to get your system ready to go is this boot appliance. Um, check out Nico Chan. Those guys rock. It's uh, N E K O C H A N. I'm sorry, uh, my my uh, manga loving friends would probably be Neko. I think that's how you say it. But either way, uh, really awesome piece of hardware uh, or software. What 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 the new Netboot appliance does is it serves as a TFTP server um, that the SGI machines will actually listen to. Uh, if you try setting up a standard TFTP server, they won't access it normally because of some. Uh, changes that happened with the uh, Linux kernel and it's not worth getting into but basically trust me just get the Dina tool uh, you will save yourself a lot of pain unless you're like a open BSD net BSD fan and that's a whole other rant so um, to get to this menu uh, when the machine is booting I'm actually gonna I'll hold down the power button and uh, turn it off you're gonna hear the cool boot noise yeah it's awesome all right as the system is booting up, you're going to need to wait until you get the option to run or enter maintenance mode or stop for maintenance here. All right, it's kind of like your BIOS on your PC. Um, what you're actually seeing here is the pre-boot menu for the, um, the PROM. And you have an option to start system, install system software. And this, this just would try to start based upon variables that are already set inside the PROM, which aren't going to do anything right now. We'll enter command mode, right? This is the, the CLI of the PROM. This is your, your BIOS CLI, if you want to call it that. Um, I can do print uh, env. These are all the variables that are currently stored uh, inside the system, right? I can do question mark here, and there's all the commands that are available. So there's print environment, uh, and I, I can obviously select one variable, but you see I've already got a net address set. So um, I've already defined, there's my, my uh, MAC address. Um, CPU frequency, all this is already loaded. Um, if you have issues with this not being loaded properly, uh, your environment variables have been wiped or dumped, uh, go to the forums at NecoChan and work your way through, read a bit, lurk. Um, don't jump in there and just say, hey, help me. Like, actually try to read some before you start posting new threads. But um, there, there's stuff going back like 10 years on that forum. Um, make sure you get these set first um, before we continue on. We're assuming that your machine just has been missing a hard drive um, for this install. So, our first step, um, since we have no valid system, is we're going to boot P. Um, and, and what we're going to do, <laughs> boop, we're going to boot P, and we're going to specify the IP address of our VM, right? So there's a 10.0.1.99 in my case. And uh, I, I've already moved the sash arcs file uh, so it's easy to get to because I don't like typing a lot because I'm lazy for the video, right? So uh, irix forward slash sash. A R C S. Um, now this this is the standalone shell, and Arcs is like uh, you know the, the architecture. So you've got different types you might have to execute depending upon your SDI machine. Again, uh, if it's not working for you or you don't have an ND, if you're using an Octane or a, yeah one of those one of those lovely beasts right there, or maybe the uh, um, ND2 or uh, you know, forget the other machines, but basically uh, depending on what you've got um, you're going to have to run different commands so we'll hop back over here, sorry to make you all dizzy, let me readjust my brightness and everything here, alright so um, anyhow, depending on your architecture, this command may be different, but for this for an ND, it's going to be sash arcs, right and that's going to load the standalone shell hit enter, alright see the little flashy lights, we're now in the standalone shell, we're going to now boot again um, this time we're going to boot to the partitioning utility. Now that we've now that we're in the standalone shell, uh, we can actually execute something else. We're gonna we're gonna run the uh, the install utility here. The, or I'm sorry, the partitioning utility, right? 
And then we're going to go to, uh, this time, it's I have it in the directory, irix forward slash fx dot arcs, right? Um, and again, these are files I just loaded on this machine from install media that I had, you know. Um, but there's fx arcs, right? And we're going to hit enter. Look at that. All right, we're TFTP booting. Uh, do you require extended mode with all of the options available? Um, currently in read-only. Yes, actually I do. So, yes, enter. All right. Uh, device name. This will be the disk name, and this would be where I would enter um, DKSC. I'm going to hit enter. Controller 0. I can keep hitting enter, right? Drive 1. Bam. All right. Creating boot info. Created partition info. Um, creating default volume directory. Um, so it basically detected that everything on it was not happy and it automatically created all the stuff that I need. I actually tell it to auto, press A, about to destroy all data, okay, yes, that's absolutely fine, destroy the hell out of that data. Right, it's now formatting the drive. I mean, this is a much bigger drive too, it makes me pretty happy, so, I mean, and, and this thing, like, this is not complicated, but if you don't have the commands to run, you're staring at the screen going, how the hell do I format the hard drive on this box? I don't even have any, I mean, I doubt any of you have at home, unless you're a nerd like me, uh, you know, 320 drive, you know, controllers, you can plug up your PC and format these. Uh, that even being said, you wouldn't format it properly for our friends at Silicon Graphics. Um, God rest their soul, a beautiful company. Uh, so, um, once we've completely formatted this drive, Oh, come on. It probably wouldn't take this long if it wasn't such a huge hard drive. And part of that's my fault. Um, wanted to get the largest hard drive possible. So uh, now we have this massive drive. Look at it go. I'm going to pause the video here for a second. I'll come back after it's completed. Yeah, part of this, honestly, is my fault for shoving a 73 gig drive inside a machine, which was only designed for four originally, or sold with four. Um, it'll work fine. It's just going to be hilarious. So uh, hold with me here. We're still formatting. Yeah, while we're waiting for this, I figured I might as well give you guys a pointer. Let's say you acquired some SGI images. Um, I made this image from a CD-ROM I had. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, but let's say you acquired some images from the internet from Torrent or wherever else because you're trying to restore your antique hardware and you can't mount the IMG file, you can't extract the IMG file, you're wanting to beat yourself over the head. If your daily driver is Windows, that's going to be a problem. You need to go ahead and use a Linux install to do this most easily. Um, so from Linux, you would do fdisk-l and then your image file. And it's going to spit out some info, right? Part of that's going to be... Um, your sector size, and then your start block, right? So for this, um, part of the info is going to show that the first partition basically starts at 64, in this case, of this image. Some images will, ha will start at different addresses, depending on how the CD-ROM was formatted. Now, SGI was notorious for doing really weird CD-ROMs. It's a whole other rant you can get into if you read online. Um, but see, it will replace the 64 with the start address for the partition. It'll usually always be 512 blocking, right? So mount dash t efs switch o comma offset equals and i just put this in here to auto calculate that that way i can see it human readable i have to keep calculating it because i suck at math um at least in my head uh then freeware right so i'm gonna point to the image and then i've already created a directory forward slash mount forward slash temp this will execute with no problem i will then have mounted that file i can then break open that cd and dump all of its directories into my uh, my boot appliance. And once that's done, uh, that, that's how I get to this point, right? So if you have a disk image file or an ISO file, this isn't going to boot off an ISO. It's not going to boot off an image. Um, you're going to actually have to bust that file open, uh, load it into the uh, uh, TFTP IRX Net boot appliance, and then you'll be good to go. Again, we're still formatting, so uh, that was a brief break, but I will pause again. We'll be back soon. Let me tell you guys, it's still going. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> that took a while. Needless to say, you can now start installing system software. So, uh, again, we'll do remote directory. 1.99 directory is going to be IRIX. 
and then forward slash. See, it's actually pulling this right here. This will take a while. It actually just jumped to the screen, so uh, we're ready to go now. And uh, make new file system? Yeah, sure, why not? Yep. This process tends to take a while, and you can actually see we're pulling quite a bit of data from the VM, and uh, lots of blinky blink, and the percentage just keeps going up, and uh, just slowly progresses through as it installs all the subsystems, and um, literally just execute all that by typing go with the inst menu, and then uh, we'll see how this works. All right, once you get to the very end, you go to quit. Basically, I just typed quit when it finished, and then... Uh, it's going to do the uh, re-quick starting ELF files. Basically those are like cache files that allow applications to open faster. Um, you could control C out of it, I'm going to let it run. It helps a little bit with system performance. And then uh, once that finishes, system will reboot. We'll be good to go. Alright, so we finished the install, we tell the computer to reboot, and there we go. Let it do its thing. Oh, the 90s. <laughs> yeah, let's just run everything as root. It's good. It's good security. For anybody who doesn't know, I mean, obviously, IRIX was never marketed as a secure system, at least not according to anybody I've talked to. Um, it was sort of like pretty research Unix. Um, anyone who was halfway intelligent was not probably planning on using this and exposing it to the public web. A lot of the design you'd expect to see in 90s infrastructure was sort of, well, as long as no one else gets to it, right? Okay. And, uh, awesome. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and sign on in here. Root with no password. That's how it should be, right? Look at that beautiful IRIX desktop. I suppose we should register to win now that we've activated our new system. <laughs> oh my god, it never gets old. Um, 
It's obviously pointless. It's going to bring up a web page that'll not really allow us to do anything useful. I'm going to fix this later. I did some weird disk partitioning I was playing with it earlier. Oh, Netscape is licensed. We're going to accept that Netscape license. Yeah! Look at that online registration. I love the, the SGI cube that spins. Don't show this alert. Continue. Preview raffle prizes and free gifts? I think so. Ooh, look at those awesome free gifts. Yeah, okay, we're, we're, we've done enough of this. Let's go ahead and close this out here. Um, ignore the mess I've made, the partitioning with the giant drive. I, I bungled a bit, but it's fine. The system's up and running. Um, so, anyhow, this would be... Basically, we're going to configure everything else. Go to your system, system manager. Network devices, network connectivity, network interface manager. Right. Close, set up, start networking. by the routing table. Do not need IP forwarding. I'm not using this as a router. Thank you, Google. Okay. Go ahead and uh, restart the system. Ooh, there you go, beat me to it. Cool. Go ahead and get back in his root here. Go over here and do a quick test. And yes, that's uh, I just now logged into that machine remotely as root with no password. And uh, yep. There we go. So uh, yeah, that's a basic system install, um, as it would be in the 90s. Absolutely no no frills, minus me sort of fargling the, uh, <laughs> I created a bunch of 60 gig partitions. How odd, let's figure out what I did later. I bungled the uh, format, but you get the point. <laughs>